Good morning. Today we're going to talk about hegemonic masculinity. What is this? Is it toxic? What exactly uh, is this toxic masculinity stuff these crazy lefties keep spouting off about? So hegemonic means the uh, ruling predominant heterodoxy or uh, orthodoxy. So, for instance, uh, in the United States, typically it's been free speech has been the orthodoxy, but this has been overturned because we let a bunch of little whiny little crybabies, spoiled little brats run the show. So what these people are saying is that masculinity is toxic because these privileged white males were uh, put a glass ceiling over the women and they're underpaying them preventing them from rising up to the top of the ivory tower, forcing them to have babies. I know, like how oppressive that you had to be born, right? So they're trying to say, okay, like Trump, Trump supporters support masculinity. They're conservative. They support traditional family values. These uh, uh, heterosexual, heteronormative people, they're oppressing all of the gay and trans and women because they have all these advantages because every last one of us came from uh, two people, a man and a woman, having a baby. And so apparently there's advantages to that. And they're upset that, there's, that, that, that the, uh, the people who are spending on average one or more million dollars per kid to raise the kid, they, they think that they need to get more money now than the heterosexual people who are raising the children and having to put out the millions of dollars in order to actually raise them to bring us this modern society. They're saying that this is toxic. Like somehow um, giving a little bit of extra money to heteronormative people is somehow akin to uh, homophobia, xenophobia, racism, sexism, misogyny, toxic masculinity. Like, you know, obviously it's this is just false on this surface because <laughs> these people who are gay, trans, uh, single white women who are get put off having a kid until their 30s so they could rise up to the top of the corporate ladder uh, so that they could commit genetic suicide because when you put off having a kid till your 30s you know women can only have kids up until they're about 35 and so this means they'll have on average one kid and when they do that they're gonna be like working and they're gonna be saving money and then women have this instinct to find men who are on the same social status or above them. And you can't really blame them for that, right? You know, you're probably looking for the same, approximately the same kind of fit, like somebody who matches you, right? Because that just like makes intuitive sense to even the most casual observer. But they're saying, you know, it's like that we can't have men be the head of household because this is oppressive to the wham men. But there's a problem with this. Why are they saying they want to like make women the managers and give them equal pay or quote unquote equal pay? We're going to have to get back to this notion that paying people an equal amount of money means that they end up with the same amount of money in the end because rich people don't pay taxes. 
they make zero dollars, remember? So, they're trying to say it's like, okay, Trump has some, some supporters that uh, will represent the Confederate flag. And they're saying that this is like, oh, that means that they're like racist. And because uh, racism and homophobia and xenophobia, they're all toxic masculinity. This means that, oh, Trump supporters are toxic masculinity, right? Because they, they don't think that you should pay women uh, equally, you, they should pay you market rates. And, but there's a problem with this entire narrative is that women aren't trying to get equal pay so they could have more money. They're trying to get equal pay so they could work less and spend more time with their family. Right? Am I right or am I right? Am I 99% right or am I 100% right? Right? Women are, even from the dawn of when they started asking for more money, the entire reason why they were asking for more money was so that they didn't have to work 12 to 16 hours a day. Right? So the notion here that, that they need equal pay obviously on the surface doesn't doesn't quite match up to what they're asking for. So they're asking for more money or are they asking for more pay? You know, this is what you gotta the, get through your head is, does having more of an hourly wage mean that you're gonna end up with more money in the end? No, what is, what is the most valuable thing in the entire world to you? Your family. And then what's the second? <laughs> your time. Your time and your family are the two most important things in your world. And so that's why you're going to work and working hard. It's not so that you can uh, make somebody else rich so that we can compete in the marketplace. That absolutely is not why we're working hard. We're working hard <laughs> to create a better world so that we don't have to suffer as much as people in the past. And in the past, you know, there's been racism, but people people act like that was the only bad thing in the entire world that ever happened. Like, like the like that, and then the uh, patriarchy putting this glass ceiling over the Wayman's head to uh, lock them up prevent them from going to school or having friends or getting a job. And obviously this, this, this narrative, when you examined under a magnifying glass, falls apart because, well, if a woman is going to uh, seek a partner who is on her own status or higher, then her partner would have a good job and would have lots of money and then she wouldn't need to work. Most affluent people come from two parent households. And the, there's a good reason for this. And it's because one of the parents has more time to spend on their child's education. It doesn't really necessarily, sorry, we're going across a busy road with a bunch of cars. So, if a woman has to have a hat children before she's age 35, Then you'd assume, you know, if she put off having kids, sorry. Whew, I guess I can't do a walk and vlog on this route. So if the woman is putting off having kids 
until she's in her 30s so that she can have a child. And then she's gonna be probably financially stable when she does have a child. But then when she does that, the, the quality of the man that she's looking for is now dramatically higher than what it used to be. So she's got money, so she's looking for a good looking guy with good genes, who has a good job. And I don't know if you've looked around and tried to date when you're my age, I'm 38. And if you look around and you try to date, you're gonna see there's not a lot of people that you wanna date. The only ones that you wanna date are quite a bit younger than you. And the chance that you're gonna get somebody who's like 10 to 15 years younger than you, who wants to date you, who's good looking, who has a good job, who doesn't act immature, has everything going on for you, this probability chance is near zero. <laughs> Not near zero, I'm sorry. There's enough deaf for people, it's probably one to two maybe at most five percent chance that you're actually going to find that person when you're 35. The reality of that is that men can have babies in their 70s and it's not going to mess the kid up because our sperm isn't like the eggs. We're like the eggs got an expiration date on them that is much shorter than the men, than the end of the men's mating cycle. The end of the man's mating cycle, I mean, he could be Hugh Hefner popping out babies. But our biologies are just different. The body of a man is different than the body of a man, woman. Like, this isn't the same thing with black and white people. Uh, a black man and a white man are near nearly the same i mean they got some different skin pigment but inside of them like pretty much everything's the same like they might look like they got bigger muscles but it's not actually true their skin just uh it holds tighter to their muscles because uh they were used for slave labor a long time ago but white people were also used for slave labor a long time ago and these people going off about this hegemonic masculinity like it's a, a problem. They're just completely ignoring the fundamental reality of our world that our bodies are not the same. Our minds function mostly similar with the exception of the uh, women's hormones causing them to behave irrationally. But our bodies do not behave <laughs> the same way at all. One of us has boobs. One of us has a vagina. One of us has a penis. And because of this, it means that we're not the same thing. <laughs> we have different needs. We age at different rates. A younger, more beautiful woman, uh, chances are she's gonna be poor. Chances are she's gonna be uh, in college or had, because you know, almost two thirds of the women or the college degrees now are getting uh, held by women or attained by women, shall I say. And the reason for this is because they're young, they're beautiful. They are more, I don't want to say like, they are more likable than the guys. People seek them out. They, people look up to beauty. They'll ignore, like if a woman is racist, if a hot young woman is racist, people won't care. Like a black, ask any black guy, ask, ask them whether or not, sorry, got a FedEx truck here. Ask any black guy, whether or not he would have sex with a racist white woman. I 100% guarantee you, 
every single black person would say, hell yeah, I'd fuck the shit out of her. <laughs> but if you're talking about a white woman and you said, hey, would you fuck a racist white man? She'd flip a wig on you. <laughs> because racism is just really unpopular. It's just because, uh, you know, what, why did white people even come to the top of, like, to, to dominate the world a hundred years ago? Was it because they were bad people? They are really, it was the, the, the responsibility of the bad people as to why we invented the modern world. That's why uh, Isaac Newton and uh, Albert Einstein and all those famous scientists and mathematicians and physicists, that's, that's why they created the modern world is because they're racist, right? <laughs> no, that's not at all why they created the modern world. They created the modern world because there was a bunch of savage barbarians out there and they used to murder people. They'd, they'd come and kill your entire village. People were racist and xenophobic because we used to have plagues. This is called the social immune system. Social immune system is where uh, we instinctively know to avoid certain people because it will be harmful for our society. And one of the parts of the social immune system is that back in the day when we had plagues, if you would shake hands with someone who was from very far away, there's a good chance that you and everyone that you know might die from a disease that you got from that person. It wasn't that they hated these people because they're just bad people and they wanted to dominate everyone. It's that it was a kill or kill, be killed world where if they did not do that, they would be killed. And so the good people invented the modern world to protect us from all of the bad things in the world. That's why we have modern medicine. That's why we have guns. That's why we have knives. That's why we have fire. It's not because there's this cabal of white supremacist, patriarchal, privileged white males who are operating a white privilege factory downtown and they won't share any white privilege with any of the minorities or the wham -man. No. The reality of the world is that people hold a wide diversity of views and these Trump supporters that they're claiming are these like racist, xenophobic, toxic masculinity, uh, hege hegemonic, masculinity people these people actually have a wide variety of reasons as to why they believe what they do I believe what I do because I don't th believe things without facts I don't I don't believe that some person sorry about the uh, cars I don't believe that some person uh, sitting up top day ivory tower in some big democrat run city is going to be having my best interest at heart sorry we'll be out of these cars in just a moment the reality about these journalists that work in these huge ivory towers are that they are clickbait artists. They're scammers. They're trying to get you pissed off with rage bait, race bait, femme bait, so that you will click on the ads because they want to make money off showing you ads and selling you subscriptions to their magazine. And the way, number one best way that they can do that is by making you afraid. If they make you afraid, then your chances that you're going to click on that article go up exponentially. If you are pissed off, the chances that you're going to click on it are exponentially higher than if you're uh, calm and you're just reading the news passively and uh, 
you're not irritated about Donald Trump. So you gotta ask yourself the question, why on earth is Donald Trump even in the news all the time? Is it because Donald Trump's a bad person? Is it because uh, he's toxic masculinity incarnation? He's Hitler 2.0? I don't know about you, but if you want to talk about Hitler 2.0, I'd, I'd say Mao Zedong because Stalin predated Hitler. People don't even realize that like Hitler was, or Stalin was the one that taught Hitler how to be a genocidal maniac. But they never say anything about the communists, right? That's because to them, they think the communists are incapable of doing anything wrong. It was just, it was, it was the far right that uh, slandered them, they painted them, they, uh, they framed them to look like they're the bad guys because communists are just out trying to fight for equality, right? Like how could you, how, how on earth could you be against equality, right? That makes you a horrible person. Like, well, there's two different kinds of equality. You know, there's the equality under the law and then there's equity where, where you give everyone equal equity of like a fair share of what they didn't earn. And that's called communism. dude. <laughs> Giving everyone equal amount of money by definition would be communism. There's no other real definition of communism other than sharing everything equally with each other, which you, I mean, technically we say they don't have money. There's different ways to describe communism. You could say, they're 100% cooperative with each other, or you could say they're, uh, they don't have money, or you could say uh, they don't allow private property ownership because money is private property ownership. Uh, but these people who are working up in these ivory towers, like these clickbait artists, like all these uh, big tech oligarchs, who are censoring our free speech, telling us what we're all, what opinions we're allowed to have, and when and where and what manners we're allowed to express those opinions. And then uh, because of that, now it forces other people to enforce when we're allowed to, uh, when, where and what manners we're allowed to voice these opinions on because once you started brainwashing the community then people start enforcing it themselves it's like people who are brought up not to cuss they'll they're like even a chill hippie dude that like does drugs and like hates the, the system he'll still they'll still come at you if you cuss like i dropped i said mother effer on a on a comment of my friends when i'm like dissing on ivory tower liberals call them itl mfer and my friend was like, hey, you got to watch your mouth. You know, <laughs> it's like, all right. Okay, so maybe it's not just the, the uh, liberals that are censoring us. Maybe it's uh, a combination of people who are censoring us who just don't like those opinions because they're good people. But the, the thing about these uh, toxic uh, feminism, pheasant, feminism people are that they just refuse to go off of what works best for our body. In the reality, the situation is the younger women are going to be hot. They're going to be, uh, people are going to be wanting to study with them in college. And because of this, it's going to cause the women to get more study buddies. And then it's going to cause them to get better grades, which means that they're going to have a higher rate of graduation. And then you put them in the workplace and uh, then you pay them equally and then you, you expect like that we're going to have the same amount of money in the end, only that's not actually true. Woman's going to find a man who uh, makes more money than her, who uh, and then she's going to have more money. So you're going to pay her money and then uh, she's going to eventually she's going to have to have a kid because she before the age of 35 she, she at some point in time she's going to need to have a baby and then at that point in time she's going to be more interested in taking care of her family than she is in work so there's no physical possible way that putting women at the top in the managerial role is going to be beneficial for for them because it doesn't work with their body it kills off their genetic line if they can't have babies which means what 
we're out of employees, which means what? We need to bring in more immigrants to replace all of the feminists that are dying off in mass numbers because they're woke and they're uh, anti-racist. So they, they like the minorities more than they do the white males because the white males are part of the white privileged patriarchy that's oppressing the whamen. Back here, this is the load of Amazon boxes from <laughs> all of the studio gear. <laughs> Woo. Where am I at? Here is the studio. If you don't know, I do RSS commentary. Or uh, as I like to say, I am the captain of the RSS commentary. Here is the studio. Here's where I do the tea setup. We started out in the other studio. The entire house is now a studio now. So what am I saying? So, uh, yeah, it'd be nice if you could just pay the women equal amounts of money and then that would cause women to get equal pay, right? No, this, this is crazy. This, this is nonsensical. Who are the people who need the more pay in the begin, it, to begin with? Is it the single white women who have a rich boyfriend? That, the single white woman who, who is the most wealthy people in this country, they need to have more money, right? Okay. No, the, the single parents are the people who are having to pet foot the bill and the, the uh, two-parent households, the people raising the kids, they're having to foot all the bills. Those are the people who need more money. So who doesn't need more money? Gay, trans people, uh, people who can't have babies, uh, older people who don't have any kids. Uh, you know, there's a long list of people who don't have kids. These people don't need more money. These people have plenty of money. I mean, unless they're in a third world country, of course. But uh, they don't have the responsibility. They don't have to pay a million or two million dollars to raise their fam their kids, to pay for all the college, to get that white privilege. You know, the African-Americans People are saying that they're underpaid, just like they're saying the women are underpaid. And then you you look into the into the details of it. You're like, oh well, they're making on average sixty six cents on the dollar for every dollar a white man makes, right? You're like, oh well, that sounds horrible, right? And then you start looking into it, and you're like, well, the average age of a white person in the United States is fifty six, and the average age of a black person in the United States is 23. So you're like, okay, would you, would you expect somebody who's 24 to make the same amount of money as somebody who's 56? That's like the period of time when people are making the most in their life. No, you would expect them to make double or more than the 23 year old. How much money would you expect a 23 year old white male to make? about $24.7 thousand a year, the same amount of money that a black person makes on average in America. See, it sounded like it was racism. It sounded like it was toxic masculinity, but they didn't take everything into account. Women in the United States, they control two thirds of the money in the country. So when you pay a single white woman more money what you're going to end up doing is you cause radical income disparity. You got the white woman got massive amounts of money and then she can't, she's been putting off having a kid to rise up the corporate hierarchy and then she's 35 and then she's looking around and all the dudes are fat. <laughs> they're nerds. They like, they, they're not fun to be around. They're not like these young uh, buck alpha male 20 something dudes who are good looking. No, they're nowhere near as fun. They're like stick in the muds, dude. The entire situation is just bunk because they didn't take time or biology or sociology into account. When you take these things into account, like, okay, well, what would happen if women weren't the managers and they worked less? They would have more time to be women because what... You know, they're saying, I don't want people to control me. I want to be my own boss. I want to control myself. So 
what 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 kind of treatment do you get at work are you really getting treated equally at work no man almost every single person is not the boss there's only one boss and there's a bunch of workers right so that means chances are you're going to be a subordinate and somebody else is going to be your boss so you spend all your time in the workplace how is this any different than having the man be the head of household it's not it's not the only dif the the only difference is we don't have to replace our population off with minorities whenever all the white feminists start dying off in mass numbers because they put off having a kid until their 30s to rise up the corporate hierarchy so that they could be a slave for Jack Dorsey, Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Bezos, uh, Bill Gates, George Soros, like you name it. Like these people are just toxic, man. Toxic as it gets. So we got to stop being pansies. You know, like the dudes are supposed to be working out. They're supposed to be not fucking off in their 20s and uh, getting in trouble with the cops so that it screws over their career so that they can't rise up the corporate hierarchy. They're supposed to... They're supposed to be putting off, delaying gratification until their 30s, working. They're supposed to be in school with the women in an undergrad, trying to hook up the hot chicks. And then, but most men don't want to date women with masters or uh, PhDs. They don't want to date them. It's not that um, they're trying to discriminate against the woman. It's that when you're a boss ass bitch, it means you're going to be pushing me around the house and you're probably going to leave me for a dude who makes more money because I'm not good enough for you. I'm not on your level. That's why I, you know, right now I'm kind of pudgy because I got really depressed after Donald Trump lost and I don't know what to think about that election fraud information, whether or not that's legit or bunk, but I've been given editorial guidelines by the YouTube tech oligarchs to say that uh, Kamala Harris won the presidential election and Kamala Harris is your new president and Joe Biden is your new vice president. So, that session and today is what day is today seventeenth eighteenth today is the day eighteenth I'm gonna mark down that I went on a walk up the hill twenty twenty one dash one Dash, what is it, 17th, 18th? The 18th, because I didn't do this yesterday, but I like to uh, mark this stuff down, work out, and then I did a jog, even though I walked. I consider them both the same thing. Uh, Griner. Reiner circuit. That curl press row is the best exercise. I don't know how many I did. But this is my language I created. To keep my journals this is a, a self session sessions are like day session night session it's like a productivity technique at and then the date this was when I woke up 
we just went on the jog up the dry grinder court boy that is just grinder. I'm just gonna say grinder we're gonna do another one of these because they're so good you should also do the same thing if you don't have any weights you can do some push-ups right now or maybe here i'll do some push-ups remember i'm real out of shape right now don't um don't make fun of me but you know what man i'm tired of being a beta male You know, but apparently to these people, doing this is toxic, you know? I just did some, uh, lifted some weights on a YouTube channel. I talked about toxic masculinity. So, therefore, that means that, like, I must be toxic masculinity, right? Because I'm not a feminist, and I don't think that black people are oppressed. Like, well, but the, the CIA, then the black people, or the black leftists are like, but the CIA flooded the ghetto with crack in the 80s, and the, uh, and then they locked up all the black people, and so this means that it's white supremacy, right? Dude, it ain't the goddamn CIA's fault that your ass was smoking crack in the 80s, bro. I mean, I know it doesn't take a genius to figure this out, but <laughs> I guess I'm a effing genius. <laughs> uh, no, no, the people who put the, got themselves locked up in jail were the people who were smoking crack, doing all these other drugs. Yeah, certainly. There was a small amount of people that got swept under the rug, a lot of pot users. But nobody forced you to smoke pot, dude. Nobody, no, and pot's legal where I, I live at. I live in Eugene, Oregon. Uh, almost all drugs are, have been decriminalized for small amounts. Like you can, you can bang heroin in this state. It's okay. But I can tell you, you know, having legal weed, having access to that legal weed, I have definitely been smoking way too much weed. And turned me into a fat pudgy beta bell. You know? I'm like, I'm not gonna show off how fat my belly is. It's not that bad. You know, probably looking better than most of the people my age. But you know, most of these hot chicks who've been working really hard to rise up the corporate higher the hierarchy, they'd they'd give me a hug and they'd be like, oh god, this dude's like a fucking blob of jello. I'm too good for him. He's not in my league. Not on my level. <clears throat> and then she would never give me a time of day. And this causes, you know, the women are getting the diversity tickets with the minorities uh, because the dudes who work up in the ivory tower, they're letting their penis fall off so that they could dominate the ivory tower. And they want some women to hang out with. So they want the women to give up having kids, uh, and just like tie their tubes and uh, give up your family throw your husband under the bus so that you can slave for some rich person to make him rich. And then at, at, at the entire time, turns out she didn't even need the money. Like this is toxic. Like these people are, the only reason why they're pushing this stuff is because they want cheaper labor. They know with twice as many people, uh, with uh, men and women in getting these advanced degrees, then they're gonna have cheaper labor. And the problem with this is that you're not going to get paid as much. So the more people you got in the field, the less money you're going to get paid. So your husband could have been getting paid almost twice as much money. And then you could have just not worked. You could have started a business. You know, they're, they're like saying the men are oppressing the women because only 17.3% of businesses are started by women, right? 
as if like this, that's the man's fault. But then you look into the numbers of how many, many businesses they own. Oh, they own 43% of businesses, right? That's almost half, but they only started 17.3%. Where did they get the other 15.3%, 0 0.7%, where'd they get that from? Somebody gave it to them, their ex-husband. They got a divorce from their ex-husband. They took half of his stuff. They, then they got the business. They, they, their husband started a new business and they said, hey, honey, you can have my old business. I'm not, I'm not doing this. So apparently this is oppressive. Apparently it's oppressive to have a husband with a good job and to have a family. It's more oppressive for you to be, or it's less oppressive somehow for you to have never been born because your mother was a feminist. She put off having a kids until her thirties. And then she was not able to have a, a, a kid because none of the guys were good enough for her. That is night and day more, opp more oppressive than uh, getting a bachelor's degree, hooking up with some dude with a good job and having a family and being part of that uh, affluent class of people that come from two parent households. For real, we live in a real world. We live in a place where there's animals. You get a man and a woman, a male and a female, and they have babies, and it doesn't happen just like that. Their bodies work differently. The, men, the women are more beautiful when they're young. The men are not. The men are more attractive when they're older. When you're younger, there's like nine guys for every single woman on Tinder. When you're older, there's seven guys for every woman on Tinder, or there's seven women for every guy on Tinder. It's because it flips. You know, if you don't learn that pattern, you can't exploit it. You have to be able to exploit that pattern because if you don't, then you're not gonna be able to get the benefits from it. And then you're gonna be part of that whiny butthurt crew of losers who are saying that the uh, heteronormative people are oppressing us because they have all these advantages. So we need to take away all the advantages of being heteronormative and having two parent households to appease some fringe minority of people that in the end, they're not gonna be working like parents. Parents, the reason why uh, fathers work so hard in the workplace is because they have families to feed at home because they got the woman at home they got the kids at home. They got to pay the bills. They got to put food on the table. They got to pay for the education. Gay people, trans people, uh, feminists putting off ha having kids uh, to rise up the corporate ladder. They don't need that. So they're not going to work for it. They're not going to because they don't have to. They're going to pick a job that's easier, like a, so a, a normal, sane, rational person would do. The people who are going to work these really hard jobs are going to be the parents and that's why they're the dominant class of people that's why they have all these advantages is because it's advantageous to have been born and to have uh, multiple people that can help you out in life as opposed to being a single mom and having your kids have a 20x increase in go going to prison and nine and a half chance increase of being a drug addict Single moms raise poor kids with bad attitudes that are lazy, have no bad work ethic, and they lack discipline. And there's nothing you're going to do to be able to replace the benefits of having a father in the home with the mother, because that is the most advantageous thing that you could do for your kid. I've said enough about this. I'm going to sign out here. Thanks for checking out my first vlog here. Uh, and uh, don't forget to subscribe to Caleb McCullough on YouTube. You can follow me on Facebook if you want to check it out over there too. Although I think maybe it's time to get off Facebook. But anyways, uh, peace out.